I'm going to tell you nine mistakes some graphic designers make and why you should avoid them. So we don't need any further ado, let's go into the video. It's Double T Friday! <laughs> Tips and Tricks Friday Hello you guys, my name is Dennis, welcome and welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn graphic design and how to make creative designs, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you won't miss any video. This is video 2 in this series which has to do with mistakes graphic design beginners make. So if you've not watched video 1 then you would like to click a link on the description so you watch video 1 then you are good to go. However, there is no excuse to make these mistakes once you are informed, so avoid them at all costs. All these mistakes are linked to the use of type, so ensure to pay attention. The first mistake is poor use of typefaces. Next will be what is referred to as orphans and widows as well as rivers. The third mistake you will be familiar with by now is having no margin. Mistake number 5 is having a cluttered or busy background. Mistake number 6 is use of corny borders and bullets. And our third last mistake is stretching or distorting images. Our second last mistake is trying to fill all spaces that is lack of negative space lastly is to avoid plagiarism so let's look into a more detailed aspect of these mistakes before that let's do this exercise if you were to receive a message like this what would be your initial reaction would you feel excited or scared i'm sure no one will feel excited our first mistake to avoid links to the use of typefaces no one understands the mood and message your typeface converts if you struggle with choosing typefaces then get your friends families or colleagues to give their own opinion this option gives more relaxing mood and does not look uncomfortable like the first example using wrong typefaces has its consequences so learn to understand your typeface and the feelings they convert in addition to determine mind the mood of a typeface make sure you limit your use of typefaces as to not overwhelm your audience use a maximum of two or three typefaces the size of your typeface is also very important that is legibility should be what you should look up to when working with typefaces what do orphans and rivers refer to in graphic design terms these mistakes normally happen in your body copy and lots of people tend to miss them when proofreading your artwork we normally focus more on headings that we miss this small mistake an orphan is a single line of text at the bottom of a page a widow is a single line of text at the top of a page and thus separating it from its paragraph don't separate single lines of text from its paragraph so how do we avoid this mistake it's simply adjusting your tracking and leading a real quick some terms i'll be using in this video are graphic design terms you may not be familiar with so i'm going to link up a video here so you get to know those terms you are not familiar with and this video will be understandable when you hear those terms. A river is another term used in graphic design relating to the large bodies of copy. Have you ever read a book or article and you find this gap in between the lines of type that you just simply can't avoid? Your eyes keep seeing them even if you are not looking for or at them. This happens when you justify body copy and this can be avoided by simply adjusting the tracking of the whole paragraph. Having very narrow or no margin is the first sign to identify an amateur graphic designer. The reason why you should avoid this is because it can cut off valuable information especially when it has to do with print designs. So always ensure that your design has lots of margin to avoid cutting out important information in your design. Like I've always said, every print design after print goes for guillotine that is trimming of the edges and when trimming most times the machine makes mistake to cut off the valuable part of your design so if you're a type of designer that ensures margin in your design this guillotine won't have any effect on your design also leaving white spaces on your edge makes the document seem less cluttered a cluttered background refers to any distracting background that equally competes for attention your background should be as its name implies 
lies in the background. Ask yourself whether cluttered backgrounds have any value it will bring to your design. And if you can't think of any reason, then it's better you don't have any background at all. A border's goal is to enhance certain elements. Having a big or corny border will certainly not draw attention to the content inside of it. Corny bullets like stripes, symbols, and smiley faces will also denote your design is amateur. So please avoid them. Borders are made to enhance their content and not draw attention to itself instead of the content. So keep it simple and stick to plain dots, hyphens, and squares. For distorted images, I believe we are all familiar with this, but if you are not familiar with it, then you have to watch this part. Do not warp, distort or stretch your images forever as far as graphic design industry is concerned. Whenever you want to resize your images in your design, ensure that you resize it evenly until you get the actual size you want. The reason why some graphic designers tend to add elements into every open space they find in their design is fear of white space. Negative space is also an element of design and that you are allowed to use it. This last mistake can cause your name and you can even end up in jail. Simply using Google Images or any other website to get access to images for your design is illegal. This is known as plagiarism and it is a form of stealing. Google Images that has a logo or watermark covered on it is actually there for a reason. And even if it does not have any logo or watermark on it, don't use it until you have proper permission from the author. Ask yourself how you will feel if someone uses your design that you spent so much time to create and without giving you any credit. Would you agree to this? Of course not. If you can't find any solid proof from an author to use any image, then simply don't use it at all. Please make use of free resources that gives access to free images. Most of the times you will need to credit the author and other times you will need to use it for personal use. Just don't ever steal from other designers. It is a disrespectful and criminal act. No matter where you are in the world, if you are not 100% sure that you are allowed to use any image, then simply don't use it as simple as that. For this, I will make a video on how to get free images from freepick.com and i will show you how to credit an author as well coming up next design tuesday thanks so much for sticking around to the end of this video kindly like share and comment your ideas regarding this video or if you know any other mistake graphic designers make let's know down in the comment i will see you next time